Just the event is starting your life. <sighs> Hello everyone. Apologies, Marco isn't here. Um, so we'll start the cave in about three minutes. <laughs> Rushing around. I didn't got my light turned on. Oh, sorry. Yes, there you go. Right. Ah, lovely. Timing, timing. Ah, open oh, back. How will this work, you twat? Oh, well, that's interesting. What's that? I've got a clear thing on my screen. Oh. Preview's fine. Yeah, got you now. Right, lovely. You was live on the live page. Good, good, good. We has got... Not very long. Yes, for the benefit of those of you watching in black and white, Mark always had issues. <laughs> yes. Uh, so what we've done for the last in the last five minutes is quickly knock up something else. As one oh, does. Uh, <sighs> Twenty seconds. Twenty seconds, right? I should get the bug ready and rolling. Right. Our proud sponsors of VapeTrails.tv I see Ridian's in chat. He's not behind me tonight uh, because Ridian didn't know he was going to be on. It was that last minute. Um, Ridian, if you want to buzz my Skype at some point during a, a, a VT, you want to come on, feel free. Um, yeah, Marco's got some gremlins. So uh, in the last five minutes, we decided to put the cave out tonight. So fortunately, we've got some VT. And... Uh, I have something to talk about as well, and that would be on Saturday. It turned out to be my uh, my three-year vaporsary, vaporsary, vapor. Oh, I don't know, vapor anniversary thing. All right, I'm going to slow down now because I'm rushing a bit, aren't I? Because I'm in manic mode. Um, yeah. So three years and a few days ago, I switched over to vaping. And um, I started off, I'm, I'm going to go for the whole story. Uh, some of you may know it already, but whatever. Last minute show, I need to fill some time. So, um, yeah, I uh, I had a conversation with a guy at work who is still a smoker uh, of tobacco. And um, he's just discussing, he goes, oh, those new e -cig things. Goes, I, I, so I said, yeah, yeah, I've, I've seen those around in some shops and things, you know, I've not really paid them uh, much heed, to be honest. I, I said I can't really see how they could work that well. Anyway, he goes, "Oh, wouldn't it be nice though? You could have you could have a smoke in the office and have a nice tobacco." He said. So I thought, yeah, yeah, it could be a bit of fun. So that night I went home and thought nothing of it. And um, as some of you may or may not know, I do have a little bit of insomnia. So I woke up pretty early that that morning on the on the 4th of July it was 
I didn't realise it's the 4th of July and the Independence Day and that sort of thing because I'm not American. So I... Um, and that thought was still buzzing around in my head about e -cigs. So I thought, let's have a look online. So uh, look online I did. And I discovered an e -cig, uh kit. It was uh, a SkySigs kit. And I thought, oh, I could buy this. I mean, the main reason I decided to do it is actually the um, at the time the, the missus was just about to be made re made or let go of her job. She was a she was a temp, so so maybe done. It's not quite correct. So um, yeah, so I thought, well, we need to save a bit of money here. You know, it's going to be tight. What with, what with her not working and things. So that was my main impetus uh, because I had that thought buzzing around in my head. I thought, why not give it a go? Why not have a look? So I thought, uh, so I looked online and I saw this SkySig kit. And it was one of those ones of the the personal charging box things. Uh, so you charge the, the box up, a USB thing, and you screw the uh, the, e -cig, the cigar like battery in. And it will charge that up on the go. So I thought, well, that's not a bad idea. But the price was about 50 quid. And I was thinking, oh, is that, that, that's a bit steep, isn't it? But I thought, well, okay, no, 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 let's do this. So I went ahead and ordered one. And then the thought occurred, it's going to be a few days before I see this thing. What do I do in the meantime? You know, I, I'm one of these people that grabs things and gets on with it, okay? So I uh, I thought, you know what? I'm going to drive down to the Tesco's garage down the road and uh, see if they got any in stock. Or, or no, sorry, uh, or, or Tesco's garage, yeah. Anyway, I got there and the, the garage forecourt was closed. So I popped into the main supermarket, it was a 24 hour one. And uh, I said, oh, I said at the tobacco counter, I said, uh, have you got any of those uh, electronic cigarette things? And they said, no, no, uh, we don't sell them in the main main shop. They sell them in the in the garage. I said, well, what time is the garage up? And they said, 7 o'clock. It was 5 a.m. at this point in time. So, okay, fair enough. So I went for a two-hour drive around Bridge End, thinking, well, if, if I go back home now, I'm not going to do this thing. I'm not going to I'm not gonna do it. So I went for a two-hour drive around Bridge End, just moved around and whatever. I had a couple of smokes, that sort of thing. I, one actual thing, I never actually smoked in the car. Ever. I've never smoked in the car. So, um, yeah. So I stopped the car and I got out and had a cigarette and contemplated things, checked the internet on my phone, that sort of thing. Seven o'clock comes around, I head back to the garage and I buy two disposable e-cigs. They were the ten motives, in fact. Uh, so... Um, I immediately walked out of the garage and I took one out of the packet. I sat in the car and took an inhale on it and I thought, okay, this ain't bad. So then I drove home. All the while driving home, puffing away in this e -cig. And I had a big grin on my face because, as I've already said, I've, I've, never, ne I've never smoked in a car. What if having kids and things and I, I've never done it. So, um, yeah, so I just... Drove home, sm uh, pu smoking. That's what I would refer to it at the time. Okay, using that that past tense parlance sort of thing. So I was puffing away on the, on this thing, and I got home and uh, went upstairs. And the, the missus was still in bed, so I woke her up and I was puffing. Away. She goes, "What are you doing?" I said, "Oh, it's, it's one of those easy things." She goes, "Oh, can I have a go?" So I handed her it. And she, "Oh, it's not bad, is is it?" I said, "Okay, I've got you one." So because I bought two, you see, so. On the same day, me and the missus switched to vaping. Um, so I, I don't know how I managed it, but we, we both managed to eke out these disposables for two days before the uh, SkySeek kit arrived. And uh, and when I actually got that SkySeek kit, I charged it up, and that was like a revelation to me. Uh, I The first flavour I tried in it was a tobacco flavour. Um, and then I tried that, a cherry cartomizer, and I had a packet of cards. And I, so I tried these different flavours, and it was, it was quite something. And then that's when the bug got me. Um, and I should like to point out as well, when I f after the first time I, an e -cig, uh, I, I used an e-cig, I have never, ever smoked a tobacco cigarette since. Um, so, yeah, anyway. So I... Uh, I looked online a bit further, and uh, I discovered an Ego device, and I discovered UK Vapors, and and so it went on. 
And now what we end up is, and you can't see most of it, but I've just got this mass of stuff around me. And I can't see it slowing down anytime soon, to be fair. Um, and you know what? For a bit of nostalgia's sake the other day, I got my first Genesis out. And that being a, uh, a Cobra. The first Genesis I ever bought. Uh, I don't have a battery in it at the minute, do I? Let's <laughs> quickly rectify this. Oh, God. You see, I'm not really prepared. I was going to go through all this tomorrow night, so... Uh, to... Right, my first Genesis, and in here I've got uh, an absinthe, isn't it? I know it's a coloured juice. Yeah, it's fiery. I tell you, the vapour production is nothing compared to what we use these today, is it? it it's quite bizarre. And that was at the time for me. That, that was that was amazing. I I just I just couldn't believe it. You know, uh, it took me a long time to learn how to make one of these. Yeah, I, it's not the vapor production we're used to. Is it? I mean, I'll try another battery because I'm convinced it should have actually output a bit more than that. Let's get a, a, a Sony VTC4 on the jobby. Nah, that's not going to work, it's too short. Oh dear. <laughs> Bear with. <laughs> oh, good God. Right. Let's try a um, an E-Fest jobby. They're a bit longer, aren't they? No, that's not going to fire on that. Let's get a Cenobor out. I mean, I know this thing's probably about 1.5 ohms, so I can use something like a Cenobor. There we are. Pop that in there. Yeah, that's fiery. Yeah, yeah, and to this day, I still really like a Genesis. I don't really use them that much anymore to be honest but uh, simply because they leak really easily you just tip them upside down as you heard last night when Bob was talking about his love of Genesis uh, as he's um, they, they do leak very easily but uh, they are really good so yeah let me say the vapour production uh, it probably needs a rebuild to be honest with you it's, it's been a while um so, yeah, I, I discovered the world of mods and things. And this this was my first ever custom-made mod. And for those of you who don't know, uh, you remember D or Goatee. He's been on the show a couple of times, and uh, he's referred to as Goatee on the forums and things. He actually made these, and he did a limited run of about 10 or 15, maybe 20 of these. And uh, I got one of the first... Uh, it's number six. And uh, this is what is termed the vape punk, and uh, and I still absolutely adore this. I don't use it very often these days. It's more of a more of a display piece now. But uh, this is my first actual custom-made mod. Uh, very comfortable to hold. Lovely. And Simon, no, stopped about Genesis records. Although interestingly, it, once I tell you this, you're never going to hear it the same way again. Right, invisible touch, yeah. Just think of these three words. Invisible top shed. Anyway. Uh. So yeah, that was my first custom made mod. I'm not going to go through my entire collection because even an hour is not long enough for this. Uh, and I, I, I got many other things. I got a, a bigger ego at one point. This is an, this was an ego mega or something. Uh, it's now a sacrificial thing to pull bases off stuff. Uh, what else do we have here? I, I did have a lava tube, but uh, that was that was the first variable voltage mod I ever had, and also the first mod I passed on to someone. And I actually bought the mod after watching um, our very own Marco seamlessly. There, look at that. Our very own Marco before his vapor trails days when he had his own YouTube channel. So, uh, yeah, and. His review of the lava tube convinced me to buy one, and I was quite happy with it. 
And then, um, not long after that, it was the, the Z-Max uh, got, re got released. And that was my first variable wattage device. And that was a revelation to me. That really was. Uh, I had a Carto tank on it at the time. Um, which might be in this little box of bits. Do -do -do. On the other hand, it might not be. Uh, I've got lots of boxes of bits. Uh... <laughs> It might be the other one. I don't know. Everything's going flying. Oh, there it is. My first Carto tank. And that was... Oh, you know what? I can't think what it's called. Or even if it still fires and has liquid in it. Hmm. Dare I. Dare I, dare I, dare I. He says looking for a suitable mod to place up on it. Oh dear. Remember the Z Max, yeah? I've still got it. Um, okay, let's give it a go. No, uh, battery's not going to fit. Oh, dearie me. I'm nothing if not prepared, am I? That battery will fit. So, again, apologies. Um, you know, this is kind of an off-the-cuff show. Let's do it at 10 watts. It is a Carto tank. It fires. It's got liquid in it. For love me, I can't tell you what it is. It don't taste that good. I, I'll leave that. Um, oh... Good God, I'll tell you what, it's nostalgia, it really is. I, I should really go through a lot of this stuff. I've even got my first dripper here. Look at this thing. I don't know if you can see that. It's my first dripper. Uh, where's that lovely sacrificial mod of mine? Let's pull the base off this. Oh, that's seized up, that is. Yes, Dave, it is indeed my rank tank. Although, ah, that's not coming off there. <sighs> I did say rank tank, didn't I? I didn't do a Jonathan Ross. No, okay. Um, yeah. Oh, so done things move on. And now look, three years later, we've, we've got all manner of massively cloud-producing things. Two of which we have been... Yeah, these two. Two of which we're having reviews of later on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, right. <sighs> so, yeah. So, yeah. Three years on, and we've got massively high-volume, cloudy things. So, I, I, stuff that you just couldn't have dreamt of three years ago. Uh, you know, I... Uh, even three years ago, the vaping world was entirely different. I mean, I, I, I don't think what it was like in you know when when Dave Dawn started what six years ago, uh, and the rest of the uh, the more veteran members of the VCTV team. You know, it's uh, it's really coming a long way, and uh, long may continue so long as innovation doesn't get stifled by upcoming regulation. Yes, I know. I have to get a mention of that in there, don't I? Right. right, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go to the adverts. And then after that, we've got part two of Ridian's review of the Mutation X version 4. And then after that, we've got a review of the Council of Vapor Royal Hunter. And then after that, it will be time for me to ramble a bit more and make excuses for the fact that I've done a short notice show. And then it'll be the end. Anyway, I, I don't mean to sell it so badly. Right, let's have the ad break and we'll see you in a couple of minutes.
Tech UK are proud sponsors of VaporTrails.tv. LP Vape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquids. Proud sponsors of Vaping Entertainment on Vapor Trails TV. Our proud sponsors of VaporTrails.tv And we're back and Dave in our chat has just informed me that that tank was called the Tripotlis tank. It's been so long. I haven't used it for a long time. Good tank though, although you can never tell when it was out of juice because you can't see through it. <sighs> right, anyway, because, well, really unfortunately got me some VT before the show, so uh, I suppose we should play that in. It doesn't look like he's going to be appearing on the show tonight because his virgins aren't warmed up yet. Ah, uh, yeah, anyway, okay, so uh, about 19 minutes in, I'll see you again. So here we have my NI200 wire. Um, the company is getting a little bit popular among the VTTV team. Um, so I cut a bit off and here it is. Right. So here we have it. Let's get that autofocus working. Go on. Right, you can't quite see, can't quite see, but um, because of the light, yeah, I'm, I'm not getting, I'm getting a lot of light being reflected off there. But yes, those coils are spaced; they're not touching. So, and that is the whole point with nickel is not to have your wires touching. So let's put it in. So there we have our coil rough almost perfectly lined up over the large uh, put it around bread because we've got the large external air hole here well you can see it what's for there so you're not getting the entire airflow over the coil mainly because the diameter the diameter of the wire is so small, therefore it's it's not the 26 gauge that I'm using. This is, um, what was it, 24? I can't remember. Anyway, by the by. Um, so I'm going to whip this up as normal. I'm going to be using uh, rayon like I did on the cam file build. And then I'm going to stick it on my DNA 40. So, sorry, a bit of a fog here. Right, I've got it on my Reaper Shark without tipping everything over. I've used the same juice and I've got space coils. 
there, there you go, space coils are set at 30 watts uh, 0.22 so this it did say new coil same coil but because it's pretty much exactly the same as the nickel head in there it uh, didn't pick it up oh, didn't ask me to change but there you go and it's coming in at temperature protected There we are. So um, what I might actually do is uh, change change the temperature up. Sorry, juice on my fingers. Change the temperature up to oh, to ten to twenty to 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 twenty, I think. Confused now. Um, I guess I need to tighten something up. So bear with me. There it is. Uh, let's make sure everything is connected. Yeah. All right. Okay. Right. Uh, now I have. The new coil so it's new coil up reading at 0 0.17 and 220 there we go that's working nicely so i'm gonna juice it up again i'm gonna put the top cap on and have a toot Sure, it's nice and wet. Now the um, now the top cap has still got the one side full open and the bottom airflow. So let me line them up. There we go. Nice and clicked in. So I've got it this side. Oh, get on the camera. Don't break your wrist. So that's what we've got. That's what I said in my previous DNA 40 video. If, um, well, the last time I did a video with the DNA 40 was my first time with the ZNA 50 DNA 4 to DNA 40 upgrade. Um, but yeah that's it's smoother it's smoother again than camp film but most people ex most people know that and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna keep this on here over the weekend it's friday now i'm gonna come back on monday uh, mon well my monday and use it over the weekend and give my opinions on it and then what I'll do after that is I'm going to do exactly the same bill Canthal dual coil build in the V4 and the V2 because uh, I'm probably got, not going to be using nickel on this but it's always worth looking into so um, cheerio for now it's Monday and I've been on the device since well, since the last piece of VT, as you notice, I've changed. And this is, to recap, it's got the nickel coil in. Uh, temperature control has been working fine. And what I have found out is that the best airflow setting, and I've tried all the combinations, well, a lot of combinations with the bottom flip, bottom shut off just the sides open and all that so what I've actually myself 
think is the best just to have in this setting and that is one side fully open and the bottom feed uh, bottom feed is just open on its biggest hole so it's restricting the airflow underneath to one single hole rather than three and yeah so what I'm going to do next is do another comparison side by side of the version 2 which I have and this one so it's going to be dual coil cam file I'm going to make it as identical as possible so yeah I'm going to crack on with that here we are then um, essentially identical setups identical number of turns on each coil on each of these well oh, don't spin around yeah so I've got 26 gauge which is about 0.4 mil wire and I've used six winds around a three mil screwdriver and I am even using the same wicking material which is rayon for each of them and the same juice too so this is all about um, the differences between each of the RDAs themselves so I have the version 4 on your left version 2 on your right and obviously you could probably tell just by the screws anyway but that's also the added difference uh, so what have I done to you know, done to tweak it myself I've actually made an effort to get a gap underneath each of the coils to get the air flow on each of them roughly the same when I say roughly the same I usually do it anyway so I'm gonna stick this I'm going to stick this on my uh, Sigali 100 box. Identical wattage. Uh, they are identical resistances according to the Sigali 100. They're both at 0.3 ohms. So let's get these on and let's have a toot. First up, the version 2. Uh, I really should have screwed it on beforehand. So let's set it at the equivalent of 4.2 volts, which would be, come on, which would be, let's call it 50 watts on both of them. They're coming out at 4.1. There we are. There. And my autofocus isn't working. Ah, oh, there we go. 50 watts, 4.1 volts. Right, I'm gonna have all the airflow open. Line up each of the sides with the coils. So, and what I'm gonna be using is the proprietary drip airflow control for each of them and then and then what I'm going to do is, you know, give my opinion on it. It's not an expert opinion, but it's mine. And I hope it'll help you. So there we are. Both sides full open. Watch that I look away. I'm looking at a monitor. So what? Excuse me. Wet it again using the same juice as I said in the previous part, and for it, I'm using Vapor Shark's Trixie. I quite like it. And, and with Rayon, it seems to hold the juice really well. 
So a full open again, 50 watts. Right. It's from my point of view, I'm creating quite a dense cloud because I'm just seeing the vapor on top of itself while looking at it. And from the side, it doesn't look that thick because I'm using my monitor, um, my laptop monitor, to look at the cloud when I let go. But as this. It's not about clouds, it's just the differences between the two and what the improvements are. So, well, to see if the improvements are any good, that is. Um, right, um, so it's full open at the bottom too. There we go. Right, make sure it's properly wet. All air holes open, you can see me through that. Downside, I'm, my fingers are getting really slippy. Right, listen out for the sound differences. Ah. You can also see that it's slightly raised on this one because I had uh, the dark horse on it before and I haven't changed the contact pin. Silly. But it doesn't make any difference in the reading on the device. Right, immediately that feels more dense to me. Um, the flavour is identical, yes I'm getting the cottony taste on both of them, I'm, but I'm getting the flavour through as what it should be. Um, do I think that the airflow is better? Yeah, I can I can feel it. I can. It may not sound like the airflow is giving you much difference. Yes, I make my coils so they kind of crackle but um, this feels smoother it's producing a lot more cloud because of the increased air and that's what cloud chasers want they want ultimate airflow um, I'm going to try something a little bit off the cuff. I'm going to close the bottom feed off, but keep both sides open. And believe it or not, that's creating an ever so slightly denser cloud. One more for luck, shall we? Yeah, flavor flavor spot on. Cloud is denser with the bot bottom feed closed off. So, um, my thoughts on this: the Mutation X V4. If you like your airflow, it gives it to you. And you thought the V2 and the V3, even though there's no change between them apart from the screws, um, you thought that this had ridiculous airflow. The V4 takes it to the next level. It takes your customization to the next level. Uh, you can you can restrict the flow at the bottom, restrict the flow at the sides. Um, with the nickel build I showed you earlier, I off one side completely because I thought there was no point as it's a single coil. So it worked well there. Uh, I think I'm gonna. Hmm. I think I'm gonna keep. Keep. 
keep using this because it right now I have both windows open and it's still quite misty so yeah this chucks clouds and the juice is about 50 50 so imagine what it was like when it's close to 100% VG yeah it's a cloud chasers device it's a cloud chasers RDA so I'd recommend it to all my cloud chaser friends uh, if they haven't got it already uh, if you are looking for a dripper that you can restrict the airflow on as much as you want because you remember you still get the plugs at the bottom to completely knock it off and you can turn the AFC so you can close one one side off you can close both sides off and just use the bottom like I will now really hot but some people might well, it's not really hot it's quite warm sorry about that so yeah the customize the way this dripper can work for you in ways that you want is just ridiculous so yeah that's the mutation xv4 toot toot And there we go, boys and girls. That was young Rydian there reviewing the Mutation X version 4 part 2. Um, I didn't have the sound on it now. I was actually reading chat. And I just looked by and I just saw this. What's all that about? Anyway. So nice clouds there, sir. Very professional vaporing of you. Uh, Sean O'Toole mentioned that if you like the Mutation X version 4, you should try the troll. I, I got a troll here, actually. Uh, I don't think I've ever reviewed it. Would you like me to? You know? Just something like <sighs> right I suppose it's time for the second ad break and when we come back we'll have a look at the Royal Hunter okay UK are proud sponsors of VapeTrails.tv. Often imitated, never duplicated. Award winning service and products from cloud9vaping.co.uk. Dripper just got 40% bigger. So if you love discovering new e-liquids, tell Dripper what flavours you like and we'll send you 70ml of juice and at least 5 flavours. With a money back guarantee and free delivery anywhere in Europe, dripper.co.uk What's in this e-cig cloud? Harmless water vapour, right? Pretty much yes. Compared to a lit cigarette, it's much safer than smoke. But it contains nicotine. And nicotine on its own isn't toxic and doesn't cause cancer. If you're worried about switching to vapour, here are some facts. No tar, no smoke, no burnt tobacco. Cooking your evening meal produces more toxins than are found in exhaled vapour. Tobacco smoke contains toxins at very high levels and vapour does not. And that vapour contains 6,000 times less carcinogens than cigarette smoke. Electronic cigarette vapour. There's nothing to be frightened of. The only dangerous electronic cigarette is a banned one. Sponsors for Vapor Trails.
There we go. So uh, just looking at chat there through the ad breaks, everyone's going about chuff caps, and Reedy would much rather chuff cap on his Mutation X version 4. I could potentially print you one off, you know, Rid. Let's we'll have a go, innit? Okay, uh, let's crack on then. Another Dripper review coming right up. Hello. Welcome to my front room again. We haven't been here for a while, have we? I think last time was, uh, was a Tob Juice review. Hmm. So, uh, what have we got today then? Well, what have we got today? Well, you've got the Royal Hunter. I've been wanting to get my hands on one of these for a while. Let's bring it back here because it's this focusy thing. Hmm. So, uh, let's go down there. Uh, actually, my coffee table. <laughs> I'm actually, uh, well, the missus is away, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to do a review down here in the living room. So, uh, I've got all my building stuff down here. She's going to have a fit when she comes in if I don't move all this. Anyway, so let's go down to my coffee table. I'll do a, a little closey uppy thing, as one does. I'm not going to bother with a build on it. It's it's a dripper. So, uh, yeah, and we'll see you back here in a few minutes. Okay, so uh, well, we've got here the Royal Hunter by Council of Vapor. Uh, right, let's do the ability unboxing. Here's a box. Here's the device. Tra-la. Okay, that's where you get the, uh, that's about as good as we're going to get. Okay, we'll go through that in a minute. Let's get that out of the way. Okay, so we've got in here, we've got a little doodah. Which I can't really seem to get, oh, there we go. Use a tool to get it out. Shot that to one side, so that'll be another insert for the top. I've got some bits and bobs in here. Blue screwdriver, some spare screws, uh, an Allen key. So if you've got some Allen key screws in there, that sort of thing. We've got a like it on Facebook thing. Yeah, whatever. And a quick start guide. Let's have a quick look at the quick start guide. So there we go, wide bore, high flow drip tip, blah, 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 blah. Move the top cap and the sleeve. Loosen positive and negative screws. Yeah, we get the idea. Right, okay. So then, let's have a quick look at this. I'm not going to build it on camera, uh, frankly. Right, so we've got this uh, arrangement here. Where we can see that... Uh, right, so you can, you can single coil it by the looks of it. Presumably, by yeah, if you do that, then you'll bug off one of the air holes. So, uh, yeah, that's all good. Or dual coil it, like so. Okay, so here, this is an interesting feature. So, this is actually the wide bore drip tip. But as you can see here, you've got sort of a honeycomb affair. Now, that I do believe is to uh, cut down on spit back. You know, when, you, when your coils are really uh, chucking out the juice in it. Well, you, we've all been there. You get little droplets of, drip, uh, of juice in your mouth because uh, you, your coil is spitting. This is uh, designed pretty much to, uh, to stop that. However, if you don't want that, you can just pop this insert in here and uh, use a regular 510 drip tip. So uh, that's pretty natty, isn't it? So, uh, choose a. Oh, forget that for a minute. Right, let's just pop the uh, sleeve off there. So, there's the deck. Thank you, camera. Okay, so you can see there we've got. Uh, yeah, we've got four post holes there, and uh, they're a fairly large size, probably about two mil. Uh, fairly large, fairly deep juice well. And on the bottom there, we've got some uh, typical cancer of vapor engraving. Now, I don't know if this is an adjustable 510 or not. But it is. Is anything coming loose? Uh, maybe. Maybe. Oh, well, that's only one way to find out, isn't there? Yeah. So not really that adjustable. Basically, you unscrew that and that centre device is going to come out. 
which is fair enough, I suppose. I suppose you can adjust it a little bit, but you know. There we go. So, um, yeah, I mean, that seems to be silver plated. I don't know if it's silver plated steel or what it is. Uh, so, and it's quite a proud uh, 510 connector, so I don't think we'll have any trouble with that. Hmm. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to shove a build on this. Uh, using, um, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to use either regular canfile uh, or nickel. Uh, so I shall decide. And uh, there we go. But we've all seen a dripper built before. You don't need to see me doing it. So uh, in the interest of keeping it sweet. So uh, short and sweet even. God, what is the time this morning? Oh, I have absolutely no idea. I'm doing silly things at silly o'clock in the morning. But anyway, I'll uh, I'll catch you on the flip side. So hopefully you found that fairly informative. I opted for a, a nickel build in the end, and it came out at uh, 0.07 ohms dual coil. Uh, so I've got this sitting on top of an SX Mini at the moment, sitting at uh, 40 joules uh, in the powerful profile. It ain't bad. I'll tell you, the flavour of this is quite something. Uh, Build-wise, it's actually quite easy to do. Um, wasn't really an issue. Didn't really have any fiddliness with it. It took me all of about 10 minutes to get a build on it. Probably could have done it quicker, but you know, I like to make sure those cores are nicely spaced. Um, all right, so uh, we had a close-up and look at the device. Uh, I think this is available in gold as well, actually. And the black, I don't know, but uh, yeah. Surprising, actually, the drip tip here. It's actually really comfortable. I wasn't entirely sure about this. I was thinking, oh, I might have to use the adapter and use a 510. But it's actually really comfy. And uh, this is actually, uh, I believe, a 50-50 uh, e-liquid here. This is Cosmic Fog. I believe it's 50-50. It's pretty... Pretty liquidy, uh, but, um, mm, and it's producing clouds, all right. Uh, but, uh, on that note, I think I need to refill. So let's pop the, hey, the, the 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 top is really nice and easy to remove. It's lovely to work with, to be fair. Yeah, this is definitely a fifty-fifty because this is dripping out the drippy thingy. Uh, just fill this up. It holds a fair old uh, lick of e-liquid, to be honest. It's uh, It's got a, quite a deep juice well. And uh, as I've been using Derringers a lot recently, this is quite a nice uh, a nice change. I can actually get more than about five drops in there. Whoops, I'm overfilled. I'm getting a bit zealous here, aren't I? Hmm. Let's just burn some of that off. <laughs> hey, I hope you saw that because that is exactly what I was talking about in the closed yuppie section about the uh, spitting. Oh, I tell you, I made a right mess of this. I'm glad I've done this on camera because I do make a mess of things every now and again. And uh, it's nice to actually show you me making a mess of stuff. Uh, it's, uh, that's uh, that. You see that? Right. That's pretty. That is exactly what this juice guard is to stop. Okay. So let's see if it does, because you've just seen it spit. Oh, God. I've got juice all down the side of my mod now. It's really badly overfilled. I'll tell you what. I'm going to cut here because I'm just going to tip some of this uh, excess liquid down the sink. <laughs> this is too, I've, I've put too much in. I was chatting away while I was filling it. It's my own silly fault. Back in a mo. Okay, I'm back. I, I tipped some stuff down the sink. Right, so where were we? Oh, yes. Right, you see that spitting? Hopefully you can, because that is exactly what this is supposed to avoid. So that's... Uh... Yep, 
yeah, it's it's avoided it. I didn't get any liquid in my mouth apart from the vapor. So uh, that's good. That's very good. I like that. I'm going to crank this up a little bit. Let's put it up to um, let's put it up to sixty. Yeah, why not? I don't know. Fifty is the highest I can go on this, isn't it? Let's change the temperature as well. Uh, I had it set to two hundred and twenty degrees centigrade. Let's set this to. Um, Actually, I prefer it in Fahrenheit. Right. Right, so 500 degrees Fahrenheit at 50, well, joules, watts, whatever you want to call this thing. So, uh, let's just finish. Uh, okay. Exit, yes. Right, so there we go. You can't see that because I haven't got autofocus on here. This is a fixed focus thing. So, uh, yeah. Okay, then. Oh my! <laughs> what you could do with 100% VGNS, I just don't know. That's fun. You wait till the missus gets home later today. <laughs> she ain't gonna see the telly. <sighs> do, you, do you do you like my mug? It's uh, it's DNA 40 approved. Hmm. So then, let's, let's chat about things. So, a disclosure, this was actually provided uh, free of charge for me, for purposes of review, by uh, Barracuda Vape. Um, and I'm certain, if, uh, uh, during the live portion of the show, uh, uh, a employee of Barracuda Vape is probably in chat. So thank you, that person from Barracuda Vape. He changes your voice as well. Um, I believe he's retail somewhere between the 30 to 40 pounds mark. Um, uh, 35 quid or something like that anyway. Um, it's very nicely machined. Uh, as I said, the, uh, the, the top, that just comes off with ease. The, uh, the airflow adjustment, that spins really freely. There's no tightness on the O-rings at all. It's just right. It's not, well, it's easy enough to take away. I mean, I, I don't think I could hold the mod with it. Oh, no, I can. It's starting to come away. But it's it's solid enough. So this is currently full open. So that's um, I, I like the airflow actually. It's uh, it's like a little volume control. I, I appreciate you can't really see on this. But, uh, I'll, I'll do a little bit of a close yappy thing on the live show. Uh, so let's pop it down to one. Well, oh, that's tight. That is really tight. Um, so good news for you people that like a tight vape, actually. I mean, you can do a single coil, so that'll be even tighter. Um, and, of course, if you remove the... Uh, you put the 510 adapter in, that'd be even tighter still. So, um, yeah, it's very adjustable. Um, let's put it on two. That's a, I, I love this. It's like a little volume control. Still producing excellent clouds, and the flavour's really increased. So what is this? This is the uh, I picked this up as well uh, earlier today. This is Cosmic Fog Kryptonite. Um, I'll do a review on that at some point. So that's with that's that's on two. It's, it's all the same power and uh, temperature and everything. But good vapor, good vapor, an excellent flavor. Uh, onto three. Not quite enough for a lung hit, but if you put it on the fully open four. Yeah, you can get a nice comfortable lung hit there. There's, there's, there's a bit of resistance. I mean, it's not as airy as some, but it's, it's airy enough at least for me. So, um, yeah, as you might have guessed, um, yeah, I aside from the fact I got this free, I mean, you know me now, by now, surely, that uh, I would... Give this a thumbs down if I didn't like it, if it was free or not. But um, yeah, it's really, it's, 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 for the price, for the price of these things, you know, 30 to 40 quid, it's 
very heartily recommended. You know, it's it comes to somebody, doesn't it? And you get an atomizer this good. It's a genuine article. It's cheap as chips. It performs well. You get a good flavour production out of it. Yeah, I, 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 I recommend it highly. So I'm going to spend the rest of the morning after I've finished doing some housework and editing this video uh, having a good vibe. So, uh, cheers. Ah, there we go. Look at that. It's nearly time as well. It's almost as if I planned this, isn't it? So yeah, that's the Royal Hunter. Lovely, lovely thing. I really like it. Aye. But uh, yeah, really, really good. I might talk a bit more about it next week um, because I'm kind of out of time. Right. So, uh, those of you who are going to be going to Vapor Expo this weekend, do come up and say hello to us, uh, to myself and the rest of the team. We'll have our own little stand and everything, sofas, and it'll be great. And you might even get yourself on film. So that'll be fun. And you can vape in the venue, all right? Anyway, rest of the week coming up then. So tomorrow night we've got Marco uh, joined by Mr. Ridian Mann for Vapor Scene. You didn't get out of it that easy, sunshine. And uh, followed by, on Thursday, Mr. David Dawn and Keith Herbert with the Haze Hour. And then we're all heading up to Birmingham on the Friday to set up our lovely stand for Vapor Act. I'm really looking forward to this. I missed out on Harrogate, and I really wish I was there. So there we go. Um, and don't forget our way 4 coming up very, very shortly. Anyway, so I think that will do. I will play the closing, and I'll see you next week, possibly on a Wednesday. So tomorrow night is the Battle of the Broadbands with uh, Marco and Ridian. See you next week. Sponsors of VapeTrails.tv